Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs and in today's part of our series what every maker should have in his lab. Uh, I don't have to explain a lot. Uh, it's a, a handy nice little magnetizer, demagnetizer. Uh, you will know the problem that uh, sometimes you need a screwdriver or any other metallic uh, steel tool uh, that is uh, not magnetized and there are other times when it's uh, quite useful to have a magnetized tooltip, um, especially when you uh, uh, want uh, to get screws out of a device uh, without falling down. And now, well, how does it work? You just put your tool once through, through the magnetize section and now you see it's magnetized. Now for demagnetizing it does not always work at the first time. Let's see if we get it demagnetized. Ah yeah, this one it has worked at least uh, nearly 100%. Uh, um, let's try it again and see if we can find out if the demagnetizing does not work at the first time. Now you see, well, it still has a little bit magnetizing left, so you sometimes have to put it, have to make a few tries to fully demagnetize it. And you see, I don't, I can't make it out now at the second or third time. But uh, anyway, it's, uh, you need a little, some trials uh, for really demagnetizing. And uh, sometimes it helps just to magnetize it again and then demagnetize and you should always try to put it through the middle of the hole and not touching the sides and you see it's again not fully well it's really takes a little not practice but uh, some trials to demagnetizing is easy demagnetizing uh, is uh, not always 100% uh, working, but after at least you can uh, reduce the magnetizing usually sufficient so that screws, uh, especially if they are weighing more than a few grams, uh, don't cling to the tip anymore. So it's, it's as most things in the world, it's not uh, perfect, but uh, anyway, um, uh, you will, uh, if you will be lucky if you have one. Uh, so how does it work? Well, magnetizing a uh, piece of iron or steel is uh, is not very complicated. You have permanent magnets here uh, inside, and if the field of the magnets is all in the same direction, then of course you get the effect of uh, magnetizing steel or iron tools and here in the demagnetized section the there are several magnets uh, with um, chance orientations or alternating um, orientations of the magnetic fields and that means in the end um, w when you uh, put um, a tool through it then uh, you also get a kind of chance magnetizing of the tips and so the different uh, parts, uh, can, the different magnet, magnet, magnetic fields cancel out each other in an ideal world. And now, uh, okay, now we made it again to be nearly uh, demagnetized. So now there's another method for uh, perfectly demagnetizing uh, magnetic materials. You may remember there was a time when we had, when we were recording uh, sound and music on uh, magnetic tape, like in tape decks or cassette decks, and you had this uh, tape head which had a very narrow slit in the middle and below it there was an uh, electric coil which generated the alternating uh, magnetic field to magnetize the particles inside the tape. Uh, but um, after a few hundred or uh, finally after around a thousand hours, 
The tape head itself, which also consists of uh, magnetizable material, uh, got partially and permanently uh, magnetized, and that is uh, that's not very good in uh, recording um, sound because a permanent uh, field uh, will uh, will raise the noise level of the uh, tape running over uh, the tape head. So uh, after f every few hundred hours, uh, you should demagnetize the uh, tape head um, and there was there's really one and basically only one perfect way to do this uh, you take a very strong um, uh, coil um, which with a sinusoidal and dampened uh, wave and the important thing is that the first two uh, maximum amplitudes of the uh, of the current through uh, the demagnetizing coil, which you you brought in contact here with the with the tape head, uh, they had to be above the the field strength that you need uh, to um, uh, to reverse the direction of the magnetic field. That that is always uh, the same with magnetic materials you always need a minimum field strength to uh, reverse the polarity of uh, the magnetic field. And when you dampen out this alternating sinusoidal field, then the remnant or remaining magnet, uh, magnetic field inside your uh, ferrite um, tape head will will uh, uh, stay or will will get to nearly zero. Uh, there's an, another way uh, how you can achieve this. Uh, you take a um, you take a strong uh, uh, coil or with a heavy uh, sinusoidal like 50 hertz uh, uh, mains current through, and when you um, uh, when you uh, put it away uh, slowly, then also the, the magnetic field strength here at the place of the tape head will also dampen out just by pulling uh, the, uh, the coil away. So th this would be the perfect way of demagnetizing, but I don't know of any tool today with which you can demagnetize uh, tools uh, with with this method, if you know uh, if you know of such a tool, I'd be interested. Uh, leave just leave us a note or uh, jump to our forum uh, or leave a comment down in the YouTube comment comment. And that was it today for the not 100% perfect demagnetizer. But anyway. Uh, once you get one, you will never miss it and, uh, and uh, in the end uh, demagnetizing is only a matter of how often you try it. Let's give it a last try and no, it's not again perfectly demagnetized. Uh, but anyway, uh, nothing in the world is perfect. So, in the meantime, I've uh, just by chance uh, found my old uh, venerable tape head demagnetizer from uh, TDK. It's the Head Eraser HD11. Uh, just by chance here in the lab because I had it here for other purposes. Uh, it served me well for uh, nearly two decades with my uh, cassette recorder. And uh, we'll try to verify um, what I just told you about how to perfectly demagnetize um, something. But just in short how it works, it has two uh, coin cells here in the back. And uh, you can uh, even swivel the uh, demagnetizing eraser head here for some degrees to get right to the tape head here. Obviously here at the front uh, there's a coil uh, or choke inside 
and when you switch it on here on the side you first get a hardly to see red little LED and when the uh, green LED has lighted up that means now it's ready for demagnetizing and to show you uh, that it's truly an ex exponential decaying magnetic uh, field that is induced here uh, I uh, just made a little loop with the uh, oscilloscope probe so that um, the loop wire is sensitive to magnetic fields and I've set the, um, the digital oscilloscope to the highest sensitivity. We go to that, that's why you see the noise here. Now we go to uh, single capture and try to capture the field. Uh, try it that way that you also can see the oscilloscope. Now let's try it and there it is. Um, you see the, it's here the induced voltage is in the uh, millivolts uh, range because for, uh, for demagnetizing tape heads you don't need extremely large uh, fields. But what is important you can see that the amplitude of the uh, field is exponentially decreasing and I will uh, perhaps I'll take apart uh, the, uh, the TDK tool uh, at another tutorial video and explain um, the functionality uh, why it's so important that you have an, an it, it doesn't have to be exponentially decreasing but anyway you have to start from a strong field uh, down to zero of course here because of the noise of the oscilloscope, uh, you can see how it how it decreases here further to uh, zero amplitude. So uh, <clears throat> that was it for a short demonstration how a, uh, a tape head demagnetizer works, and uh, perhaps I'll, I'll make a tutorial out of it. What's the theory uh, behind it? So that was it for today. Now finally. Uh, thanks for listening and thanks for watching and see you next time at the M Show. What every maker should have. Bye from Kanka Labs.